Hello everyone. In this session, I'll show how to find the user information in Cloud Foundry environment. In a previous session, I had shown how to find the user information in the new environment. And in the new environment, SAP Cloud Platform provides a user API service that you can query and uh, directly get the user information. In uh, Cloud Foundry, it's slightly different. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to start with a project that I had done before uh, where I had shown how to use the destination in Cloud Foundry. Uh, so if you haven't seen the video, please do so. And also you can clone the GitHub project. Uh, clone uh, branch part one uh, and you will be right where we left off. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so uh, we start with the app router and we start with the access app.json file and in the authentication method I'm going to change it to route uh, so basically we want all the users to be authenticated uh, so if we are to find the logged in user then the user needs to be authenticated so we change it to route and the next thing we are going to do is we are going to have a look at the package.json file and in the package.json file we have a start script and that starts the SAP provided app router.js. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of hijack this app.router.js and have my own custom app router.js. Uh, so I'm going to recreate this uh, start uh, script and I'm going to rename this to start original. So this is the start script that gets run and I'm going to change this to say user info.js. Yes. Uh, so now when we do npm run start, it's going to do user info.js. Uh, so this is going to be my custom app router. So uh, obviously we need to create user info.js in the app router file. So I'm going to create this um, user info.js file. Now, what do I want to do inside of this user info.js file? Uh, what I'm going to do at this moment is I'm going to um, call the standard SAP app router.js. So basically, I'm not going to do anything here uh, other than just uh, do SAP app router and I'm going to call that method uh, let AR equals app router. And at this moment, it's basically calling the SAP provided app router. Uh, so we're not doing anything at all. Uh, we're just hijacking it. Uh, we have our own custom app router and this custom app router is in turn calling the SAP provided app router. Uh, so what is the purpose behind this, right? Uh, so the idea is uh, in our custom app router, uh, we can uh, do some middleware functions and uh, we can uh, add to this the user information. So let's uh, have a look at what uh, we are planning to do. Um, so we are going to look at uh, creating a middleware function. Uh, so middleware functions are like a list of functions that you can call one after the other. And uh, so the way we do it is uh, I'm going to do um, AR dot before request handler. Um, now this takes uh, uh, dot use. Uh, so this is how you would do it. Um, and then you can see that it takes uh, two parameters, uh, the path and then a function. The path is optional and I'm going to skip this, which means it's going to run for all of the routes. Uh, and then the function itself takes three parameters, the request object, uh, the response object, and a function called next. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do is in my uh, in this uh, middleware function, I'm simply going to console.log uh, some of the values in the request object. Uh, so the request object has a whole bunch of values uh, and I'm going to just uh, console log um, some of the values. The following request was made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log uh, the method that was called. So the method, uh, and I'm going to say request.method. And then I'm also going to do like the URL that was called. And again, I can query the request object and the request object should have this information. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to call next, which takes me to the next function. Um, so let me also fix this. Uh, let me see. Okay, I can uh, disable no console log for the entire file. Okay, so at this moment, we are not really doing anything other than any request that comes 
this gets run first and it's going to do some console log and then it's going to pass uh, to the next function and then we are going to call the standard SAP app router. Okay, so what is the purpose behind all of this? Now, what we can also do is we can have a custom path. Like we haven't provided a path in the previous method. Uh, so here I'm going to provide a custom path and I'm going to call this get user information. And then uh, this again takes the function with these three parameters, request, uh, response, and next. And we know uh, that the user is going to be authenticated and the request object will have the request uh, will have the user information inside of it. Uh, so just like we queried the method and the URL, uh, this request object is also going to carry the user information as well. So uh, the idea is basically simple. Uh, so we're just going to get the user information from the request object. And it's going to be in the form of a JWT token. And if you don't know JWT token, uh, please have a look at the, this uh, website, jwt.io. Uh, so the JWT token has like three major parts to it. Uh, the part that we are interested in is in this purple part, and this contains the payload, and it is a base64 URL encoded. Uh, so at this moment, what we are not going to do is we're not going to validate whether this JWT token is valid or not, but what we are simply going to do is uh, take this payload and just decode it and get all of the user information. So that's basically what I'm going to do here. And for that, I'm going to use this uh, JWT-decode uh, uh, this NPM package. And like uh, I mentioned before, it doesn't validate the token. Any well-formed JWT can be decoded. Um, so it's going to, we're going to uh, query this request object, uh, get the JWT token, decode it, and get the user information. Okay, so let's get started for that. Uh, let me go ahead and install this NPM package. I will go inside my app router and then in NPM I uh, JWT dash decode. And this is going to install my JWT uh, decode package. And here I can say const JWT decode equals require, and I can say I do need this JWT decode. So far, so good. And here, what I can do is uh, I'm going to assume that the user request object has the user information. Um, so I can do a rest.status uh, code equals 200, and I can do let a decoded JWT token equals uh, JWT decode. So uh, this is the NPM package that we are going to use to decode this token. And we are going to do request.user.token.access token. So this is where the JWT token resides in the user object. So we are going to take that and then we are going to just uh, simply decode it. And then once I decode it, uh, I'm just going to send it back. Uh, I'm going to end the response. Uh, so I'm not uh, going to go down the chain of uh, middleware functions. I'm going to end it right here and I'm going to send it as a json.stringify. Uh, let me do uh, JSON, rest end json dot stringify and this is uh, going to be an object and this is going to be the uh, decoded JWT token. I think we are good here. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think we're good here. Uh, we're going to do this json.stringify and we are going to end the response right here. Now, um, if you noticed, in, I can remove this next because we're not using it. Uh, if you noticed uh, in the new environment, uh, SAP Cloud Platform provides a user API and we call that directly and we get all the user information. Whereas in the Cloud Foundry, it's uh, almost like we are creating the API ourselves. So we have this uh, new slash get user information API. Again, this path can be anything you want. And then we are decoding this uh, access token and then we are sending it uh, 
as the response. So basically, we are creating the API that provides the user information. Now, on the UI module, uh, it's just a matter of uh, doing the same stuff that we did in the new environment to get the information and display it to the user. Uh, so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model. And basically, these are the same steps that I followed in the new environment. So I can go here. I can create a named model called user model. So I'm going to call this user model. And this is going to be of a type. And it's going to be sap.ui.model.json. Uh, JSON model. So we are creating a model, and then in my app controller.js file, um, what I want to do is uh, I want to call this uh, uh, API that we just created, or this uh, endpoint that we just created, which is uh, get user information. So I'm going to call this endpoint in my on init method. Uh, so right when the application starts, I want to get the user information and this is going to return a promise and there's going to be a response and I want to convert that into JSON and this is going to return me another promise uh, dot then and this is going to return me something called data and here with this data what I can do is uh, let me also get uh, the model so this dot underscore user model equals this dot get owner component get model and this is uh, a named model so user model and I should have access to the model here and let me also do let me equals this now here I can simply say uh, me dot underscore user model uh, dot set property and I can set this property and this is uh, basically the same steps that we did on the new environment. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, showing this uh, data to the user. And if uh, there is any kind of uh, error, then I can say error. And then I can simply console.log that error. So nothing fancy here. Uh, simply making a call to this endpoint. And uh, that is uh, kind of served with this custom app router that we just created. OK, now we also want to show this in the UI. Uh, so for this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a VBox. And within the VBox, I'm going to create a label. And I'm going to close this label as well. And here, for the label, I'll have a text field, uh, which is uh, going to be uh, display, uh, display user, uh, display name. And then uh, I will display the name of the user and also his user ID. Uh, so here, we can query, query this user model. We can do the binding from the user model. And the attribute. Uh, is going to be part of this object, and this object is uh, a decoded JWT token. So I'm going to put this object right here, uh, slash uh, given name. So this is going to provide me the first name of the user. And then I'm going to copy this to get his last name as well. And the last name is uh, in the attribute family name. So I can get the last name. And then I can get the user ID as well. And the user ID is uh, in the attribute user underscore ID. So at this moment, I have the display information. And then what I can do is I can also display the email of this user as well. So I'm going to copy the whole thing. And instead of display name, I'm going to have email. And then I'm going to have uh, email right here. delete this and delete the, all of this stuff. So this should give me the email. Uh, so what have we done so far? Um, so we have uh, the access app.json. We made sure that authentication is turned on. And then in my package.json, 
I have uh, my own custom app router and my custom app router pretty much calls the SAP provided app router except that um, before it runs I have uh, a method that gets run uh, which kind of logs some information and also I have my own custom path and when I come to this path it decodes the user information sends it and kind of ends the response right here uh, so it doesn't go to the next function so and I'm in my app.controller.js I'm going to make a call to this uh, get user information and if all goes well I should get the data and I throw it into this user model and I display it on the UI so let's go ahead and deploy this to Cloud Foundry so for that I can look at my package.json file and in my package.json file there is a build which creates the mtar file and then I can do a deploy.cf okay oh there's also a, there's a deploy script already here so I can simply run npm run deploy which is going to build and deploy to Cloud Foundry uh, so I will come back once it's deployed Okay, the application is now deployed, so let's go to Cloud Foundry. So if I go to Cloud Foundry, the application is now deployed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is open the link in incognito window, and it should prompt me for a username password because, uh, uh, yeah, so it is prompting me for a username password because authentication is turned on. Uh, so I'll log in with my SAP email address, and once I log in, it should take me to the Fiori launch pad where I have the tile. And um, once I click on it, it should show me the user information. So I click on it and it should make a call to my, yeah, and it uh, makes a call to the endpoint that we created in the app router. And you can see that it displays uh, my first name, last name, my user ID, and my email. Now I was expecting my I number as my user ID, but I guess uh, as the Cloud Foundry probably stores this as the user ID. Uh, maybe there is something in the identity provider that you may have to map the attributes, uh, but that's the user ID that is being returned and that's the email address. Okay, so uh, fairly straightforward, slightly different from how we do it in the new environment, uh, but if you do have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thanks. Bye.